That is so sweet. I was not expecting this vibe at all, to be honest. Like, I'm, I'm a little confused where the lamppost comes into this equation. It makes me really feel some type of way about La Seraphim. Hey guys, welcome back to Lex Listens. If you're new here, my name is Alexa. Today we are checking out La Seraphim's new album. I'm very excited. I know there's a lot of repeats from their first album. However, I have only recently gotten into La Seraphim. So these all pretty much all be brand new to me except for the few singles that I do know. So without further ado, we're going to get right into it. I'm probably going to be filming this as kind of like a half and half reaction because right now I have about 45 minutes to kill. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be enough time to make it through the entire album or not, but I have about 45 minutes until Taylor Swift's album drops, and when that drops, I'm going to be skipping over to that. So, Hi there, this is Editing Alexa, and I just wanted to say a quick disclaimer. I looked up a playlist to see the track order on YouTube, and the playlist told me the wrong order of the tracks. So the tracks are actually in a completely different order. However, I listened to them in this order thinking it was the correct one. Next time I won't trust YouTube, I'll definitely double check with Spotify to make sure it's in the right order. But FYI, it's gonna be in a different order. So it's kind of like a choose your own adventure style playlist. So enjoy, <laughs> sorry. Without further ado, we're gonna get into Unforgiven. The first track is called Burn the Bridge. One more thing before we start, I just wanted to mention that this full uncut album reaction will be on my Patreon, so if you're interested, go check that out. It will be linked down below. This feels like the beginning of a movie. That literally didn't feel like a song. <laughs> I know it was a song, but it felt like it was like the beginning of like a movie or something. Like I felt like I was in a different world or something. I don't really know. The next song is Unforgiven, which kind of, you know what? It kind of makes sense that they started with that kind of like speaky sort of track, I guess, and then went straight into Unforgiven because they basically were saying it's okay to be unforgiven and that's what we're choosing to be type of vibes. We're gonna bop around to Unforgiven. It'll go really fast for the YouTubers that are watching, but for our Patreon members, please bop along with me. Watch me now, 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 now. I don't know how it goes. I'm really hot. Good. The next one is called No Return Into the Unknown. Sounds interesting. You know what it makes me think of though? Because I am a mother of a two-year-old. It makes me think of Frozen 2. Into the unknown. Into the unknown. Ooh. You know what this is making me think of? It's making me think of No Celestial just a little bit. Like, this is the same vibes. And I'm here for it. I'm so here for it. Okay, 
Interesting. To be honest, the vibe I got was that it was sort of either about a relationship or maybe just life and the idea that they just go all in. Like they just dive right in and they're not low key. Not low key, low key, low key, low, you know? The next song is Eve Psyche and the Blue Bluebeard's Wife. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> okay. Okay, I did some production. Oh, I heard this. Not the whole thing, but I definitely heard this part. Because they go like... Interesting. Ooh. Is this all English? Oh, this is the- oh, oh, I accidentally- I clicked the English version. Hold on. Okay, I got the right version now. Okay. I've definitely heard this part. I think I've seen it on TikTok or something. It's like, cause they go. They go like, boom, 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 boom. I think it was like a dance challenge or something. I'm a mess, 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 mess. I'm a mess in distress, but I'm still the best dress. Feel less, say yes, we don't dress to impress. Ooh. I feel like this is a similar concept for them. They have a lot of like things that are forbidden, unforgiven, that type of vibe. I want to watch a live performance of this one. First of all, I feel like it's so catchy, like incredibly catchy. Like the boom, 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 da, 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 get it like boom, boom, boom. Like I've definitely seen on TikTok, I think there's like a lot of challenges with it. I think I've seen like Stray Kids do it and maybe like Young June from TXT, did he do it? I don't remember. I feel like there were a couple of people I saw that did this challenge though with them. 
and I would love to see it live just because I want to see like the dancing and like the vibes like I've obviously like I know it like they do this and then they do this and then they go like boom 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 like they do stuff I know they do stuff but I really like it I like the vibes I feel like I'm really starting to, if I would never noticed before, I'm definitely noticing now that they definitely have a message and they are trying to send it. Like they have the whole like we're fearless vibes, they got the whole um, not being afraid of the taboo or what's like un, un, no, what's forbidden and what's making them unforgiven. Like all these vibes are very La Seraphim, I guess you could say they are very on brand in that way. Um, but yeah, I'm liking it. I like that song a lot. Might be my favorite of the album so far. I don't know, Unforgiven is Bob. But might be my favorite so far. The next song is called Fear Not, Between You, Me, and The Lamppost. Interesting, I believe that Fear Not like, the people who are fans of La Seraphim are called Fear Knots. Am I wrong? I'm pretty sure I'm right on that. Oh, a slow one. Oh my god, Shaywan's voice. It's only between you and me. So take your mind and why am I like in truth she's not fearless but you you help her fearless that is so sweet in truth she's not all fearless but you you help her fear less I don't want to start it over. I really like this song so far. I've said this about like every song, but this might be my favorite. I'm, I know I'm very, very, only 38 seconds in, okay? I know this, but I really like this song. We're starting it over. I just love the vibes. Oh, J1's boy. Why do I want to cry? <laughs> I wonder if there's something significant with like La Seraphim and like the idea of under the lamppost like I'm, I'm a little confused where the lamppost comes into this equation like i get you and me like you're saying la seraphim and the fear knots i believe but where's the lamppost coming to this why is the lamppost here <laughs> i'm not hating the book against the lamppost being here is it because of the light has the light between you and me they keep mentioning something about light and that's why I can't do that. Ah. Uh. I love these kind of songs. Oh, even if you can't always smile. Ah, I love it. Ah. <laughs> oh, 
I love that one too. So far, I mean, the first song I won't really count as a song. So far, so far they're what three for three? No, they're four for four so far. That is so good. Okay, I do want to mention that with Fear Not. First of all, it's so sweet. Anytime that an artist specifically writes a song that's kind of dedicated to the fans or dedicated to their, you know, their people, you know, I just feel like it elevates the song for me so much, especially when it's so obvious like that song is. It's obviously titled Fear Not. Um, but like I think of like, for example, even like BTS has songs that are dedicated to ARMY, like um, Taylor Swift has songs that are specifically written like with the fans and her band in mind. Like, I just think that like songs like that are so meaningful and I love the lyrics. I loved that it wasn't just like, oh, everything is perfect, we're so happy together. It was also kind of like, you know, we might not always smile, but we always have each other and everything's gonna be okay as long as you're here, like that type of vibe. And it makes me really feel some type of way about La Seraphim, I'm not gonna lie. It makes me feel some type of way. Um, I just love when artists have songs like that. I really do. So without further ado, let's get into flash forward. <laughs> Ooh, funky. Oh, it's so sweet. Oh, this one's so funky. That one was really cute. I liked it. I think the vibes were cute. I would say it's a thumbs up. However, it's not my favorite for sure. It's probably my least favorite so far, but I appreciated it a lot. It's like puppy love. It's very cute. The next song is called Fire in the Belly. Interesting. I'm so confused what's happening with the production. Hold on. We're starting over. We are starting over. I'm getting like almost Spanish vibes, but I'm loving it. Because it feels like you could like salsa or something to this. I can't dance, so don't judge me, but. It feels like you could salsa to it. Ooh. Oh, mis amigos, yeah. Trilingual. Oh, 
I love Yanjin's voice. Thank you, Mizo. Bro, they are trilingual. Probably not, but in the song they are. I love this breakdown. You know, it feels. Oh, sorry. It feels so Spanish. Like the. Like, even just the melody in the chorus, which is the part where it doesn't have a lot of production, feels very Hispanic, feels very Latina. Like, I'm really liking it. I was not expecting this vibe at all, to be honest. This part? Is there a dance to this? Have they performed it live? Please answer down below. Un, dos, tres. They're going with the Olay? Well, that song was unexpected, wasn't it? I was not expecting Spanish vibes from La Seraphim, I will not lie. However, I did love it. Fire in the Belly also rated very high for me. Who was gonna tell me that I needed to listen to this album? Like, where were you guys in my comments? Quick, guys. I mean that with the most love in my heart, of course. Um, but this album is so good. I was not expecting it to be this good. Not that I wasn't expecting, but I was thinking like, you know, like, I think this is their first full-length album if i'm not wrong please correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure this is their very first full-length album and so i was kind of like you know what like as a first full-length album i can't put so much pressure on it like that it's gonna be just as good as the singles that i've heard but let me tell you i am loving it i'm loving it i'm here for it and loving it and everything I think we're gonna end here for now because Taylor Swift's album is dropping in five minutes and I'm kind of hungry so I want to run and take a snack. Take a snack? What? This wine is getting to me all. I am planning on listening to Taylor Swift's new album. I'm very, very, very excited. So I'm gonna pause this here and then I will finish the last one, two, three, four, five, six tracks on another day, probably tomorrow. So thank you guys for watching this so far and I will see you guys in a minute. Hey guys, welcome back. Obviously a different day, different time of reaction. However, we are continuing on with the La Seraphim album. I, first of all, there's a spot on my shirt. I spilled on myself. I'm just gonna admit it like right here, right now, because if the spot shows, it's gonna bother me that I didn't tell you. So here I am telling you, I'm gonna cover it though. 
Um, but today we are checking out the rest of La Seraphim's album. I have been so pleasantly surprised by this album as a whole. Honestly, so many bangers. I can't even explain. And it's not like I didn't expect this album to be good, because I did. It's just like exceeding the already pretty high expectations I had for this album and I'm very happy about it. So we're gonna continue on with the rest of the soundtrack. I hope you guys have been enjoying this reaction so far. We're gonna get right into it. All right, the next track is called The World Is My Oyster. Whoa. Sounds like a movie. Okay. The world is perfect. Is this like interlude? An interlude moment? Very, I could see like a model walking on the runway to this song. Interesting. See, this one reminds me kind of of the first track of this entire album. Um, feels a little bit like an interlude moment. Um, and I'm kind of thinking that this was just to like reset the stage for the second half of the album. That's what I'm going to be guessing because I'm assuming that's not like, you know. I think they're just trying to reset the stage. And as I've said, I think I said this in the beginning of the, the first reaction that I did, the earlier one. Um, if they are anything, they are on brand. Like, always on brand. All right, the next song we're checking out is Fearless. This is the 2023 version, so this is without Garam. Um, I'm actually intrigued to see if I can hear the differences because I've listened to the song a lot, a lot, so I'm really excited to hear it. This was one of the biggest growers I've ever had in my entire life. Oh, it's so catchy. I need to turn it up a little bit. What you looking at? What you what you looking at? What you looking at? What you what you looking at? What you looking at? What you what you looking at? I'm fearless. Very nice. Very nice. I love a good fearless moment. One of my favorite songs by them, which is such a shocker considering how much. I really didn't like it. I really tried to like it and I was like, oh, this is the chorus just throws me off. But I love it now. The next song is called Blue Flame. Let's get into it. I like it, I like it, like it. Ooh, it's a little jazzy. I'm feeling something, not holding the sea. I took it as you don't know. So 
Wow, I really like that one. It was kind of, it was funky a little bit. It reminded me of another song from the first part, but I honestly couldn't tell you because all the names are getting mixed up for me. But it reminds me a lot of a song from the first part that I can't remember the name of, but very, very good. I highly approve of Blue Flame. The next song is called The Hydra. This kind of sounds like another interlude moment. It's a little bit shorter as well, but maybe you never know. <laughs> Do you think I'm fragile? No. I know you're anti-fragile. Yep, another interlude like moment. Do you think I'm bad? I'm anti-fragile. I'm anti-fragile. I'm anti-fragile. Fragile, 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 fragile. All right, another interlude like moment i'm here for it i mean it's it's fine to have all of those but they're not my favorite i will admit um but we're gonna move on to anti-fragile anti-fragile is that that girl you know she's that girl oh you made me boost so good it's so good so good all right last song of the album honestly one of my favorites it's very underrated i feel like this is impurities what a great album closer as well Ah, oh, what a great closer. Honestly, this album was so good. It honestly was, it was so good. And it's not that I, like I said, it's not like I didn't expect it to be. It's just that like even the B-sides, I really, really, really loved. Like, I think it's hard to pick a favorite on this album. It really is. But I really want to say that my favorite probably is, excluding the singles, it's probably Fear Not. Um, like between me you between you me and the lamppost that song that one like touched my soul a little bit and although I really loved all of them honestly like all of the b-sides were good I really did like them all that one was probably my favorite just because it just like it made me really happy inside I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction I'll leave a summary of like number one to the bottom on this list Obviously, I think I might leave out all the ones that I consider to be kind of like interludes or intros, um, but all of the songs that were like songs, I will leave on the side of the screen. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. Let me know what you thought of this album yourselves, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys!